Hey guys, I wanted to create a webinar on and walk you through the deep stack analysis tool. Um, this article on deep stack analysis and fine tuning your deep stack settings. As always, this is in the forum and you can find it yourself. Just uh, give you some context. If you go to the forum board index, you go to um, tips and tricks. It's the deep stack is also linked in the anchor page. We're gonna walk you through the entire path. So if you go to tips and tricks, if you go to deep stack. These are all the deep stack articles that we have. The deep stack with blue iris is all about um, just installing it and getting it to connect and work with blue iris. I'm gonna to talk to you right now about the fine tuning settings, fine tuning settings for the deep stack analysis tool feature. And then the gotchas is all about past tickets and learnings from um, getting blue iris and deep stack to work together. And don't worry about the last one. This has been deleted. I can see it, but you can't. So don't worry about the last one. Okay, so let me go back to the article. Um, I wanna start with best practices. So blue wires provides a lot of great functionality and clone the camera, this should be your friend. The biggest benefit of clone the camera is you know, when you're messing with settings, um, especially motion and deep stack settings, it's just, as, it's just as much a science, an art as it is a science. So knowing the before and after is very, is very good. So like in this example, I cloned ADF-1, which is a camera. And by doing that, and I single select, I can see the alerts, like clips as well as the alerts. Um, quickly, so I can compare before and after. Here's before, and here's, you know, if this is a clone, I'm making changes on it, the after. So you can tell very easily using the, the blue wires functionality itself and the database and the, and the alerts list and the clips list, uh, whether what you've done is helping or hurting your system. So cloning is a huge benefit and it's so easy to clone. All you have to do is go add camera. Instead of entering IP information, you just copy, select the camera that you're trying to copy from and that's how you create the clone. And yeah, so definitely take advantage of that. The one gotcha is Clone Master is like going to help to understand what Clone Master is about. But basically, you can you shouldn't have more than one Clone Master uh, for any group of the same cameras. So if 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 you're copying from a Clone Master, then make sure that when you create the clone, that you unselect Clone Master. So that's just, that's just a little red flag. All right, so now let's go to the deep stack settings. Um, this is an AI tool and this is where I'm at now. So I clone the camera, camera settings. I'm gonna start messing with the AI stuff, right? So uh, these settings here. And in order to like get deep stack analysis working, I mean, the first thing you have to do is you have to check it, save deep stack analysis. So this is a this is functionality you turn on and off. So like when you're fine tuning, you turn it on. Uh, when you're done fine tuning, you turn it off because this creates additional files, more storage on your on your on your drives, etc. So it's only a benefit um, when you're actually using the data and fine tuning. Otherwise, turn it off. Hide cancel alerts. I have this off now, um, regardless of fine tuning or not fine tuning, just because I like I like my alerts list like it. It says alerts, but I like to see anytime the camera triggers. So I like seeing the cancel alerts as well. Um, just because I'm a PK, like the camera trigger for some reason. I just want to make sure that this is how this is a, an easy way for me to check whether deep stack is working or not as well, right? Because once you see it canceled, you want to know why. So I, I guess the lights, the lighting here is what causes it to cancel. And so Blue Riders and Deep Stack did the right right thing here and cancel it, which is good, but I just wanna, I just, I just like to double check. So that's just the way I have it. It's a user preference. If you're confident with your AI, et cetera, you can, uh, after you've done fine tuning, go back and hide cancel alerts. Okay, and then use mainstream if available. So this is really about, um, if you're doing dual streams, it's possible. Um, for most of you guys, you, your cameras are local to your server, so it's, it, it isn't a problem. But it's possible that your mainstream could be choppy, but your substream is 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 consistent. 
And that's the way it is for my system, just because I'm trying to pull, I'm pulling these cameras across the internet. And so Monday through Friday, like during the week, when there's a lot of internet traffic, I can see the frames per second from the mainstream like drop down like five or four, while the substream is still at 30 because it's such low resolution, it gets through uh, consistently. And because of that, there's a, there's a synchronization issue between the main and the sub. And without going into all the dirty details, which I did go through in the motion fine tuning, this is the artifact that you'll find out. You'll find out that um, on the substream, look at the alignment, like the car, the object just perfectly lined up to the motion. And so this would trigger right away uh, because that's the way DeepSec and Blue Iris work together, which is very powerful. Like if there's an object and that object is in motion, that's when an alert is fired, right? Otherwise, um, Deep Blue Iris's implementation can, can identify parked cars and not alert on those. So like if you have a parking lot camera, it works correctly. And now you can see like when the mainstream gets choppy and using the mainstream for analysis, uh, is, Deep, is Blue Iris gonna, is there enough overlap between motion and the object that Blue Iris is going to um, fire the alert? Not sure. Probably, there's probably enough all overla overlap, but um, as the discrepancy between quality of streams between the main and sub increase, uh, the object, the motion overlay might be way ahead or way behind the actual object. And Blue Wires will then cancel the alert and that'll be a missed alert and you don't want that. So that is why the option is there to use mainstream if available. So for most of you guys, like if your mainstream is solid and good, you probably have that checked because like maybe with the higher resolution, deep stack is more accurate. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Maybe it's more accurate with the low resolution. You don't have to test that with your own cameras. Um, but if your mainstream is choppy, then you'll have to unselect it because motion is always on the substream if a substream is, is connected. And so having the object Deep tech identify on the on the um, on the substream as well forces uh, the correct alignment between the object and the motion. Okay, so that's a little bit hairy, but um, uh, something to consider with use most use mainstream if available. Okay, some other optional stuff is like recording in the recordings tab. Uh, I use when triggered and I uncheck combiner cut. And I love this feature on Blue Iris just because if I have an issue with uh, an alert and I, I can't figure it out, I need to like uh, touch support or in general, like if I have another issue, you know, something is, is not behaving correctly and we need a, a short BVR associated with that issue, this is how you do it. You just go to camera settings, record. By default, combiner cut, cut is on, uncheck it. And so by unchecking it, every time there's an alert, anytime the camera triggers, it creates a separate file, which is awesome when you're fine tuning slash troubleshooting um, issues. So what that, what, what, what that means is like, here is, here is the alert, this was canceled, I'll play it. Okay, blah, blah, blah. See that light is what triggered it and deep set to the right thing and, I, and cancel the alert, which is great. Now, say this was an issue and I need to find the short BVR to send to support, for example. You, I selected the alert and DeepStack, I mean, Blue Iris selects the corresponding file associated with the alert, which is fantastic. In addition to that, you can do open containing folder and DeepStack will find that file for you. And so now it's so easy to like just drag this into your email and send the corresponding BVR. So there's a lot of really nice functionality in Blue Iris that makes debugging and fine tuning so much easier. So if I double click this and I go to Blue Iris, it goes in Blue Iris as playing that exact alert that I highlighted. Brilliant. Okay, so now you know the little tips and tricks. It should make life a lot easier for you guys. Okay, trigger tag, leave motion overlays off. So motion overlays can mess up 
deep stack, so just um, leave them off. We're gonna engineering is working on this, and I, it might be resolved already, already, or it might be coming in a future release. I'll keep you posted on it. But currently, if you have if you have motion overlays, any of them, um, those overlays can mess with deep stack and cause missed alerts. So better to keep them off to maximize the accuracy of deep stack, at least for now. Set add to alerts to high risk. So I like this functionality too, because oftentimes if you have an issue and you want us and you want to share it with us, we also uh, we also need to know the deep stack analysis. And so it can be hairy how this works because uh, let me explain how it works first. So the deep stack analysis, once you turn it on, all those files are in the um, alerts folder. So G, blue iris, alerts. And this can be a mess trying to find that, that corresponding DAT file. So a nice little trick is camera settings, trigger, uh, use high-res JPEG files, okay? Now by doing that, and I did this in the past, so if I'm in alerts, once you have that on and you click on an alert, you right-click, open containing folder, it finds that JPEG associated with that alert. And here's that JPEG uh, for that alert, which is fine. However, what's most, what's most cool about it is the file above it is a DAT associated with that alert. So instead of like looking and trying to find that DAT yourself, you find the JPEG and then you can find the DAT corresponding to it right above it. So that's a really important little golden nugget as well on why you wanna use high-res JPEGs and that allows you to find the DAT files real easily. And then I walked through that. Okay, so now you're all set up. So now we can actually do, go through the actual analysis and, and it'll, we, you'll, you'll see exactly how easy it is now to know what DeepSec is doing, what BlueArch is doing, and why you're getting canceled or confirmed alerts. So now that you checked the first check, that's on. We already checked our settings, open the status window. So now how do you get the information? So if I, open up uh, Blue Iris, open up my status window. Um, here it is. All I have to do is double click. It's playing. And then the status window, the deep stack tab of the status window populates with all the information from uh, the deep stack analysis. And what's great about this functionality is, is I'm gonna walk you through it. So, so that's how you get it up and running. So now let's go jump into the details. Um, once it's up, uh, keep in mind, like all this stuff corresponds to logs as well. So it's good to know the, what's going on in the logs and how that corresponds to DeepSec. So the motion started at 11.51. And then almost a minute later, 11.01, I mean, not on the middle, 10 seconds later, DeepSec sent the cancel alert uh, event, right? And so what, what happened internally? So I had, I had my camera set to uh, break time of 10 seconds. I had DeepSec an analyze one frame per second. So that's why it's not very clear, but you can see like this is T plus, this is a T equals zero, which is the motion trigger frame, like when the camera triggered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, there should be 10. Oh, maybe the uh, maybe it stopped. So maybe the alert stopped, but I probably had 10 additional images. And um, oh, it stopped at 10 seconds. So like anyway, so like 10 additional frames. And so 10 seconds later is all these frames are processed and the alert was canceled. So that's how, that's how it corresponds. Like why is there delay and how long is it delay? It's based on how many images you tell DeepSec to analyze. 
and the, the interval between images. So you can just do the math. So I had one second pretty much uh, 10 images samples. So 10 seconds later is when um, the cancel alert was fired, event was fired from Blue Iris. Okay, so that's a correspondence between the logs and deep sick analysis. Now let's dive into the actual window. Like, what is all this stuff that comes up? So it's really, once you get the hang of it, it's really intuitive and really easy. So where's the article? Here it is. Okay, so here is the window. This is from some other random example. So let's start with the frame analysis window, like the stuff on the left. This is my name for it, the frame analysis window. There's no official name for it, like all the stuff on the left. How do you digest that? So the first thing I wanna show you is how this stuff corresponds to your settings. So in, in Blue Iris, when you say two additional images, that's exactly what it's doing. So T, T equals zero. So, you know, you have to like review, um, the, the other webinars, like you know, I talk about the motion leading edge and the trigger leading edge and that terminology, uh, that is all in understanding what all that stuff means. If you don't know it is in the trigger, trigger record and alerts webinars. So review that if you don't have an idea uh, what these concepts are. But anyways, if you do, so the, the trigger image is always sampled by Blue Eyes, T equals zero. Like that's when the camera triggered and it's gonna send that image. If you have DSEC turned on, it's gonna, it's gonna definitely sample that image. The additional two is because you said sample two more images um, per alert. The T minus one image, this is, I like this as well begin analysis with the motion leading edge is like, this is when motion first started um, before the camera triggered, but it sent some motion. And I like, I like Blue Eyes sending that image for analysis at DSEC as well. Um, so I do that. And the other stuff, so the T equals zero is analyzed by Blue Iris. The plus two is because of, is because of the setting. Begin with motion leading edge I just talked about. And the other stuff, make note of no object found. So know these icons. So these icons means when there's motion identified. These icons means, um, well, the X means nothing was found. So there's no objects were found in the, in the scene. And the asterisk, that's very important. So the asterisk identifies, it's always at the top, okay, first of all. And that's the last frame that was sampled. And it could, it could be the last frame sample for two reasons. The first reason is, is, is a, just like this image sh shows, like two additional images were sampled, no objects were ever found. And so the last image, so this is a canceled alert. And this is the last frame that was analyzed. Now, the other case is an object was found. And if an object was found, uh, the, the last frame analyzed will, will still have the asterisk, just like canceled. However, it'll tell you that the object was, an object was found with motion. And so this is how you distinguish between a confirmed alert versus a canceled alert. It's the asterisk frame and if something was found. And just some uh, important things to keep in mind. So if you told, deep stack to sample 10 frames and an object was found in, in the trigger frame, like T plus zero, blue wire stops right there. Like, even though you told to sample 10, blue wire stops uh, as soon as any object is found in any frame. So if it's found in T equals zero or T plus one or T plus two, blue wires will stop sampling at that moment. So that's why um, there's a, the, there's a difference between the number of samples you told Blue Iris to use, this is a maximum versus number that was actually used based off of if something was found. So be, 
So once something was found, why that's important is because once something is found, blue eyes will fire an alert if, if any were set. So that's the important part. Like you want to make sure that, that information is sent out uh, to the users ASAP. So th this is exactly why we stopped the sampling and send the alert. It was a design choice that we made. And the consequences, so now, you, now you're aware of it, the subsequent objects that may appear later within the same motion trigger are not identified, nor does Blue Eyes fire subsequent alerts. This is also why you may have set DeepSec to analyze 10 images, but DeepSec stopped after analyzing two frames. An object in the list was found on the second frame. Therefore, Blue Eyes stopped processing the motion trigger and sent the alert. Okay, so now you know understand the implementation. And, um, yeah, all these concepts of motion leading edge and trigger leading edge, uh, I have links to the other webinar that talks about those concepts in more detail. And finally, some other settings. So like, uh, I think a default break time for motion triggers is 10 seconds. And I, I, I have left it at that. I think 10 seconds is a good size. And so oftentimes uh, an easy thing to do is like, what I do is if, if the break time is 10, I'm, I make the number of real time image, images 10. And I have the sampling interval at 750 milliseconds to one second. So basically every second I'm sampling, like these two settings up here, um, where's it? these two, the, the number and then the interval. So that basically almost every second I'm sampling um, just so I don't miss anything. Okay, now I've explained the left side. Now the image is also a wealth of information. So on the, on the right side, the image itself, what's cool about this is when, once you say highlight motion, it'll, Blue Iris will tell you exactly where it found motion and why, and where it found objects. And now you know exactly why something was canceled. So this is a perfect example of motion was ahead of the object. Now, this is a good indication. This is like the most common gotcha where the substream, which analyzes motion, is not in sync with the mainstream, which is analyzing objects in this case. And so if they, this is a, a perfect example where the user would have to unselect use mainstream if available because the motion is not aligning well with um, use mainstream if available. Unselect that because clearly there's a misalignment between the mainstream and the substream as far as uh, motion and the object is, is concerned. So, uh, uh, so this is what makes the image side of, of, of Blue Iris so valuable. Like you can see where the motion is and now you, have, you, you, you exactly know why something was uh, confirmed or canceled. Okay, so what are the fixes for if there's a misalignment? So the, the most common one is to turn off use mainstream if available. I haven't played with this so much, but you can try this as well. And the IP config for the YouTube camera. Uh, uncheck use RTSB stream timecode and see if that helps. On, on, like this is on by, by default, uncheck it and see if that helps um, uh, get better results in terms of overlap between motion and the object. Okay, so that is the deep sec analysis summary. So hopefully you understand the functionality of Blue Iris with deep sec better, as well as how to troubleshoot um, issues or dive into issues once, um, once they occur. So let me go through one more example with you. Um, I thought this, this alert was interesting just because it was canceled. So I bring it up. Where's my alerts tab? There it is. So this was canceled. I go to the asterisk, there's no object identified. So I know it's canceled right away. And I obviously know that as well because I see that the alert that I selected was canceled. I see that the motion leading edge was sampled, which is I like. I see that there was an object found at at the um, at the motion trigger image, and then it, I sampled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10 more images um, after, after the camera triggered, which is exactly what I wanted. And I have highlights on off, Let's see? So I can see where the highlights, where the motion was and, and understand better why it canceled it. So I'm gonna turn them on because this is very helpful. So the motion leading edge, the light was blinking on and off and, and there's no objects overlapping that. So that's that was canceled. Same thing here, same thing here. Here's motion, but it's all based off of that light. It's not really motion. And the ad, the car is way over to the left, no overlap. So there's motion, but it was canceled. Still identifying motion, but canceled. Uh, no object was found. Um, so now you can see some of the inaccuracies of DeepSec. Like why was this object identified in this image? You know, slightly different lighting, but not in this image. So this is some of the uh, nuances slash, you know, fuzziness about AI. Like it's not, it's not perfect, but so the way we get around the, the inaccuracy of deep stack is you just sample more images. And so that's exactly what we're doing. So again, like obviously all the motion is due to the light. There's no objects over there. So it just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. And then finally decides to cancel it. So that is, in a nutshell, is how you would go about determining whether the cancellation was correct or incorrect. And in this case, it was a parked car, should not have canceled, should not have alerted, and it didn't. So Blue Iris and DeepSec did its job. Okay, thanks guys. Hope that was helpful.